all know the playfulness of this season's weather when one side of my face knows ice while the other boils. I'll remember a forgotten side of my mind as it begins again to work in the new green light reflected up off the valley floor. My mind has become less and less tolerant of the city grime that happens when humans aggregate for too long. I need more and more clean light, clean sound. I need more and more spring water and spring air. I love to be introduced to a new piece of wild land. Although, I'm beginning to suspect that I have stood still all the while. And it's the mountains that have adventured inside of me. The focus of all my work, mapping the ecography of California's natural world, is connectivity. Not only am I concerned with connectivity between habitat spaces, but the living corridors of communication between members of my own species. I'm fascinated by ancient patterns of ecomorphic change, how they coalesced to shape this moment in history and what the future will be for California's outstanding portfolio of biodiversity. Through one map, one painting, one page, or just one slow word, my methodology is the patient uncovering of a piece in what must be a larger interdisciplinary vision towards the securing of our own legacy, of our own future, the key to the mystery may not only be understanding the information itself, but how humans process information at all. Let's imagine a mountain peak. On that mountain peak stands a little girl, and she represents the human faculty to understand a greater context for itself. The mountain represents the capacity of human civilization to transform its natural environment in the field of history. And the far horizon, the viewshed of the mountain, represents the history of life on Earth. Turn one way, call it east, and squinting you can see the sunrise of life deep in the Earth's Precambrian era, 3.5 billion years ago. Turn the other way, call it west, and see the sunset of life on planet Earth. That too is about the same distance away, 3 billion years or so, when the core of our happy sun begins to shrink and brighten on its journey to become a red giant, after which the oceans will have evaporated to destroy even all the bacteria on our terrestrial globe. We are only in the middle of the long story of life on Earth, and there is nothing that will change that. What we can change is the story we tell ourselves, in order that we might see as much of that future as possible. I am free to imagine all things, as all things, across the bouquet of metaphor. The mountains become flowers, and the flowers become mountains, and both hold the story of my life. The tree transforms from being the form of my heart itself being desire, the function of my heart, to finally become the tangle of negative space, full of the wind that moves my desire to consume beauty, both the engine and the fuel of my heart.
The forest is not still and never is. It is only me who searches for stillness. I've been and will be wearing a thick green mantle of wolf lichen in the old red fir forest, waist deep in the billowed powder in a sunshine dream that never sets. Tomorrow it will be spring, and the day after that, summer. I'll let the flowers and the lions walk over me and feed on my eyes and my paint because it is all I have to give. In another moment, the cities of the humans will change into something else, and still I will be here, sitting on this blinking earth that is both always and never the same. Thank mm-hmm. you.